<laughs> hey, welcome back, Haslip Tech Talk. We're starting live again as the brothers are turning off the lower thirds, turning it back on, just to rub it in that I still can't get lower thirds on these silly Hangouts videos, and I don't know why. All the tech experience in the world will not allow me to get, whoa, that's starting a video. There we go. Uh, so we are going live today. It is beautiful. It's pretty hot outside, you know, um, high 70s, low 80s for me in West Virginiaville. But uh, doing pretty well out here. Jeremy, how, how are things over in Maryland? They are doing pretty good. I cannot complain at all. Um, just getting stuff done, making it happen in the business uh, technology world, and looking forward to some talking some tech, talking tech, talking tech. Oh uh, yeah, Josh, how is uh, tech, Texas land, Townsville's? It's still hot, and uh, but it's beautiful weather out. No hurricanes still yet again going on. So uh, I'm glad there's no hurricane right now. Yes, that's good glad. Glad to have a day off. <laughs> well, awesome. Well, cool. Well, I'm thankful that we have uh, some time to talk some tech today. And there's a lot of cool stuff that have been coming out this week. Some stuff launching today. That some things that have been launching this week. And some things that are coming out pretty soon here. But uh, starting off the mix is something that's pretty sweet. Uh, it's kind of uh, GoPro's initiative to keep staying in the industry. They've had a little bit of rocky start with their Karma drone and their Karma grip. Uh, they had some issues with those. The Hero 5 still did well, but now the Hero uh, 6 is in fact out. And we're gonna look at some of those uh, st stats on what everything is about it here. But it's turning out to be looking pretty good. So it's ready for your next adventure. The, the big things here that are coming out with this are, it looks exactly the same as you can see as the five, but uh, it's this new GP1 processor that's supposed to be able to upload faster, have a better dynamic range, or to help with the dynamic range, help with some of those things. Uh, but the big thing is 4K at 60 frames, which is awesome because this is an action camera. So if you're doing 4K, you're gonna wanna do 60 frames to, to keep up with the action. And then uh, 1080p at 240p or 240 uh, frames. So this is what you can get out of the new iPhone 10. Uh, but obviously, this is going to be a dedicated device for that uh, that you're going to be able to use for sports, for adventures, hiking, whatever you want to use it for. But this seems like a pretty sweet thing. There's some new things in the app that are enabled that are kind of cool. Uh, and this says most advanced stabilization of any hero camera but they said they've really fine-tuned the optical image stabilization and how they deal with the software added features to that there's a touch to zoom on the back so that on the screen you can zoom in to focus better uh they're waterproof three times faster offload speed so they have a better wi-fi connection speed so you can get those on your computer faster or connect to your phone faster it's going to work with all the normal karma grip and existing mounts, which is great. Uh, raw and HDR photo modes, um, more languages. So uh, low light performance is increased as well. So this is pretty sweet. I'm, um, you know, nothing crazy. We do see this is $499. So I mean, this is pretty standard uh, GoPro launch. Here is CEO Nick there revealing the new uh, action cam here. But uh, nothing, nothing that was blowing my mind different about this new GoPro. They weren't, everybody was kind of expecting 4K 60. We we're expecting it to be about that $500 range up to 600, maybe down to 350, you know, at the lowest, but I didn't think so, you know, so I don't think they did anything kind of pushing the boundaries here. What do you guys think about the GoPro Hero 6 and the launch today for that? Well, I mean, obviously it's going to be important for the sports community that is all about, you know, surfing and snowboarding and all that kind of stuff. They're going to, they're going to have fun with that and they're going to pay the $500 because they know they want the best. Um, now is everybody going to have a 4k TV that buys one of these? Probably not, but they will want the 240 for 1080 P 
and though it also does 120 frames per second for 2.7k pretty big deal yeah which is nice because i have the hero 3 black and it did 120 frames at 720p yeah so three generations they've you know they've jumped a lot of resolution yeah so it, it only did 4k at 15 frames a second yeah and i think so, that I, I think one of the big things <laughs> get choppy one of, the, <laughs> one of the big things about that people don't realize is with that 4k 60 frames you can crop that in and really get some good images so you know you have your 4k here and you can crop it down to a 1080p and get some actual you know a, a more close picture because obviously that's a wide angle lens so you're not gonna be able to zoom with it or anything like that but you can use that extra resolution to play around with um, some cool zoom effects some cool uh, framing of your picture I, yeah I think this is this is the next iteration it's nothing crazy but it is pretty rugged they are pretty waterproof you know these new designs don't need um, as big of a case thing with them they're less they're less boxy a little more smooth so I think it's a, a great iteration um, and you know I think it's a big win they there's this new Fusion 360 KM, um, but that's that's till uh, November. See, they they've talked about this a couple the other month. This new 360 camera that will be pretty interesting. It's supposed to do 5.2K at 30 frames per second, so that'll be really interesting. It's this kind of this um, almost like an Instagram icon of a unit there. Yeah, um, it looks like a big square. Yeah, oh yeah, I'm not sharing it anymore. I'll just it, show you it looks like a small um to be like a a s'more size, size of a s'more. Yeah, a little, little bigger than a s'more here, but <laughs> a little Polaroid or something. <laughs> what was that? I, I mean it looks like a little like Instagram Polaroid yeah. camera kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, that's what I was saying, like the Instagram I icon, like an old Polaroid camera, but um obviously there's another camera on the other side for three sixty, but um yeah, or a more pleasant 60 frames per second at 3K. So, yeah, I think these two options, that won't be out till November. So we got some time on that. But the Hero Black 6, uh, Hero 6 Black will be out today. It should be available today in certain stores, like probably Best Buy. They already have it out. Um, but, yeah, nice. I, I think this will be a good good iteration moving forward. But, Josh, uh, another big tech company released some things this week. What all did uh, Amazon come out with here? Well, uh, you know, them being Amazon, they're like, we're going to throw like eight zillion products at you. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this is from TheVerge.com. The five biggest announcements from Amazon's hardware event. An echo here, an echo there. Mm. Uh, so basically along the uh, line here, this first little circular thing is called the Echo Spot. And basically it's a smart alarm clock that makes video calls can be connected to external speakers via cable or Bluetooth. And it's kind of like a crossover between the Echo Dot and Echo Show, whereas the Echo Show is just like, hey, I'm a video screen that you can see stuff. And um, but it's, got a, <laughs> it's got a 2.5 inch screen and a more curved edge. Uh, and it can also double as a nursery camera. Ooh. Mm. So, oh, that might be usable for a lot of people that way. Yeah, so it's coming uh, coming out December nineteenth, and it costs one hundred thirty bucks. One hundred thirty. So next we have the Echo Plus, which looks exactly like the Amazon Echo. Right. Uh, they're still the same you get thing. Fancy stuff on the outside. I know, but it it includes um, it now acts as a smart home hub with second generation far field voice recognition and enhanced sound. It also uses Zigbee as a low power way to extend its wireless range. Mm -hmm. And it's priced at 149 and compatible with over 100 smart home devices that you can set up via voice without any apps. So it comes with a smart, it comes with a Philips Hue smart light bulb in every box. I saw that. That's, that's pretty, pretty sweet for 150 right now. Limited yeah, time. That's off. actually pretty good. Ball. No doubt. So now they have a new Amazon Echo that's just called the Echo. And it's going on uh, sale. It's actually called the all new Echo. Oh, oh yeah, because there's the, the old Echo and now the all new Echo, but uh, it is newer and actually kind of fatter and smaller 
then yeah. so it's like an in between between the dot and the echo um but it will now be only 99 bucks so which is nice i mean obviously you could get the amazon echo for like 80 bucks um but this one has a lot of um all the same features as the echo plus as far as like i think the the farfield stuff and stuff like that maybe not like the zigbee but it, it it will have you know the newer um some newer features as far as from to accentuate it from the old echo right but right. uh and it also comes in new finishes such as cloth and wood uh to match styles to be exact wow i know right but uh they're gonna sell three packs uh offering multi-room audio for 250. Yeah, uh, bucks. Yeah, say fifty dollars, and then they have these Echo buttons. So uh, they're actually like, um, they've got a trivia game set up. No whammy, no whammy, no whammy, no whammy. I know <laughs> that you can that you can play together with other people. I'm uh, assuming that instead of using voice, you could trigger Alexa using that too. Um, you know, if you just had Alexa over on your shelf and you didn't want to yell at it, you just wanted to press the button, maybe that would work. Um, but, uh, I think they're just have red and blue lights or there's LEDs in their red and blue covers. So they're not like RGB or anything like that. No, no fun. So, uh, they're Alexis getting into BMWs and mini vehicles starting 2018. Um, here, here's a big one. The fire TV has had 4k support for a while, but now this new fire TV will have 4k HDR support with 2160p resolution at 60 frames uh -huh. a second it will also have dolby atmos and alexa voice remote and it only costs 69.99 which is way better than apple tv's 4k for 180. right so like, wow they're like eat that right. apple um <laughs> so it that's kind of tiny look at that guy it has oh, a yeah. cable in it built-in cable you just throw it on the side of your tv or back of your TV. Uh, it says it's going to come out on October 25th. And they're also selling bundles of a Fire TV stick, an Echo Dot for 60 bucks, and an Echo Dot and Fire TV bundle for 80 bucks, which is not a bad deal. So, so yeah, that's the stuff. Um, here's a close up of the Echo Spot and the new Amazon Echo with that sweet. You didn't miss one fabric. thing, Josh. That was in the top five, but there's an Echo Connect that what? <laughs> it, it allows you to use your Echoes as a speakerphone and connect and sync your. It's a voice controlled landline. speakerphone. And oh so yes, yeah, I heard so about that. Can, well, the the Echo Spot though, right? Where was it? It's called Echo Connect, and it works with any Echo device. Any, any Echo. Wow, that's pretty sweet. Yeah, simply plug in your Echo Connect into your home phone jack, complete setup in the Alexa app, and you're ready to make and receive calls on your compatible Echo devices. Right. Well, they said that the little um, the little spot is going to get free video calls to U.S., Canada, and Mexico out the box. So that's pretty cool. From yeah. spot to spot, though, right? I mean, it's not like it hooks into Skype that's or Hangouts or something, right? That is remain to be seen. So I'm not sure if they're going to have an app for Android. I'm sure or they're yeah, fired. They're it's fire call devices. anyone hands free or make video calls with the Echo Spot Show or the Alexa app. So someone on the phone um, can have the Alexa app and be able to talk to you, or nice. someone with the Echo Spot or an Echo Show. So right. options, you got ops. Very cool. I like Very it. Cool. Well, well, moving right along, there's uh, something else that's going to be released uh, at midnight, you know, tomorrow tomorrow morning. Uh, but it's a little bit of a classic. Jeremy, what is Nintendo bringing to us? We're, we're throwing back, um, just like we had the NES Classic um, that you couldn't get for under $5,000 because everybody bought them out and was selling them for more expensive on eBay. Uh, prepare tomorrow for the same thing to happen. Uh, with the S SNES Classic. Um, uh, so uh, stay classy, stay classic. And, um, you know, Forbes, uh, I'll just let's show you real quick. They're, they're basically saying that there's a couple places you can get it. Um, 
obviously uh, places like uh, GameStop, um, I think Best Buy, some other um, retail stores have it where you can go wait in line and uh, check them out. Um, but you can also, some retailers like ThinkGeek will have just the standard non-bundle um, Super NES Classic Edition for, to, for tomorrow. I think once the initial releases of the standard non-bundles, then you'll see things like, some places like ThinkGeek that will have those those uh, bundles with extra stuff like they did just did with the Switch. So I don't know if you guys saw that as well, but ThinkGeek has like some, um, uh, like Zelda and some other memorabilia for um, that they include with the Switch that makes the Switch a little bit more expensive, but then you get all this extra stuff like, uh, like posters or they have like one with like a 20 by 16 canvas of uh, Link up in a pretty cool scape from uh, from the game. Um, so um, it's going to launch for $80 and you know if you don't want to stand in line um, you can get online from ThinkGeek. I think probably your st targets and places will have it. Yeah. And, um, no, they so. won't. They won't. <laughs> they won't. Uh, so Target, Target and Walmart are going to have it, but just not tomorrow. Like, okay. They will have it tomorrow. Um, oh, okay. But it's just going to be a very. You're going to have to stand in line in the morning before the store opens to have a chance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, right. here, here's the thing. Uh, I've got an inside track at my GameStop, local GameStop. They're only getting nine. Woo. And they're already all accounted for, just FYI. So don't go to a small <laughs> store. <laughs> well, um, uh, so actually, my buddy David did some calling around, and he knows all the local stores that have ones and how many they got in. So right. a couple of my friends are actually going to go out at midnight. I haven't decided whether or not I'm going to yet. But they're going to go out at 10 p.m. At, the, at Walmart and then go out at like 8 a.m. tomorrow for GameStop and Target uh, and things like that. So yeah, we'll see. Good luck to everybody that's trying to get it and uh, have your monies ready and and maybe maybe see it go away. I mean, who knows? I mean, <laughs> or, you can – if you had your heart set on a SNES classic, um, what I would suggest is don't don't wait. <laughs> Buy a Raspberry Pi, yeah, and get a small SNES case for it. Retro pie it up. Retro yeah. pie it up, and you can get yeah. your own little SNES classic kit, wired Bluetooth controller, or a uh, you know, wired one wired for USB. Yep. Exactly, super ten cheap. bucks for two, like. Yeah, that's what, we had a we had a group message of a couple of us dudes talking about going and doing that. And Tyson's like, "Well, if you're not, if you want one for yourself, I can just make you a Raspberry Pi, and for cheaper than eighty bucks, and it's going to have more games than than you know the just any, any Super NES yeah. game. So yeah. that's definitely an option. But I understand the collection value of it, the look of it." Probably the overall durability of it and just the software integration. I understand the normal. I understand the normal people just wanting that nostalgia and wanting it all Star, itself. You know, third games. Star Fox Two. Star Fox Two. Oh. That's not, yeah, that's not wasn't released, so that's a kind of a big deal. I'm, I'm sure somebody's gonna hack the game, hack the console, oh, and I'm make it a ROM. I'm yeah. sure. Yeah, but, but moving right along. Speaking of hacking, uh, Josh. What kind, what kind of information has been been released this week from a certain company that got hacked real good? Yeah, so I mentioned it uh, the other week, but uh, Equifax totally got smashed in the face uh, by hackers, and all, all all your information belongs to the to <laughs> hackers. So uh, yes, but. They're, they're finally making good on their promise, and they're saying, we're going to make this right. They're going to launch a free lifetime credit lock service, but guess what? It doesn't start until January 31st, so you're going to have to wait a few months. <laughs> but it's going to be lifetime, so you can always just lock your credit whenever you want, because I, I think usually it, it costs like, what, like $10 or something like that to actually lock your credit or something, mm -hmm. depending, but um, mm. yeah. It, Okay, the the new chief because they had the old chief that left with what eighteen million bucks, you know, who's like I'm out. So <laughs> I'm I'm peacing out. Yeah, uh, you know, he started by penning a letter of apology published by the Wall Street Journal, wherein he admitted the company wasn't able to live up to people's expectations 
Equifax was hacked, he wrote. Its website did not function as it should have. And the call center couldn't manage, couldn't manage the right. volume of calls after the security breach was made public. Well, duh. And oh, we not. just had a random code to let you check your, if you were hacked, and it would just say yes or no, kind of. <laughs> you know, like, so they, they, they failed. Yeah. Now said it will be free for the life of all its customers in the U.S. Now, aren't aren't you a customer if if your credit is being used on Equifax? I mean, if you're an American citizen, aren't you their customer? Everybody, yeah. <laughs> right. Everybody has a credit score is pretty much a customer of Equifax. I I, I think what they're I mean I don't know how they're going to differentiate between people that pay for their service or that that you know. Who knows? Who knows how they're going to do that? But they only make matters worse when their Twitter um, uh, account um, tweets out their website as a phishing website. So I think they have like ExperianSecurity.com, and somebody registered Security or Equifax Security Equif or Equifax Security.com, and and somebody created the opposite Security or Equifax Security or vice versa, right, and right. they accidentally tweeted out the reverse. <laughs> and oh, we're so sending people to putting in their user, you know, potentially their security number and everything into a phishing website. So that that got taken down within a couple hours. But how many people went to that link, you know, thinking that they're on the actual one? Fired <laughs> thousands, thousands. Yeah, of you people. know they had to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So but yeah, that was, that was pretty brutal. They said that you can actually uh, get your credit frozen until the end of January before this thing starts up. So. That's yeah, at least yeah. good to hear, okay. but um, I haven't even touched Equifax's website. I just signed up for that Credit Karma credit monitoring, and I'm going to let them monitor my credit and see what happens. Woo. So, fun stuff. Well, fun stuff. Well, speaking of monitoring uh, things, I've been monitoring the launch of the V30 because I'm pretty excited for that. And it is right around the corner, and meaning it is next. Thursday, so I'm pretty pretty happy about that. I think it'll be pretty cool. Here's uh, the link here for Engadget's article on it. Uh, October 5th, next Thursday, will be the launch, and that's when uh, there's a couple things here. So Sprint has zero information right now on when and how much, but they just say pre-orders you know, start soon. Uh, they haven't really said much information. Uh, T-Mobile, you'll be able to pre-order 5 a.m. Uh, on October 5th when you can actually get one in the store the 13th. Their pricing is you could pay $80 down and then $30 per month on a plan or $800 outright. AT&T is, um, theirs is $810 outright or $27 a month. And you can order online on the 5th or buy the phone in stores from AT&T on the 6th. We still don't really know anything about uh, Sprint or Verizon's pricing, but Verizon did say you can go in on the 5th and get one from the store. So Verizon would be your, your fastest way to get the V30. If you are looking at starting a new line and just want to get it out right, right now, uh, Verizon, you can pick it up on the 5th. Um, but uh, And the V30 is the only one that can currently use the new 600 uh, network from T-Mobile. So that's pretty cool uh, that they have this special technology in LG. They've actually done that with a few iterations of their lines throughout the years is that they put as, pack as many satellites, I mean satellites, many bands as they can in their phone to take advantage of the towers that they can. So uh, that's just some information from you all, for you all that, you know, we're, we've been talking about a long time and it's been hyped up, hyped up. We finally get concrete dates when things are coming out either the 5th or 6th or the 13th, depending on the carrier in the U.S., and it's going to be about 800 bucks. So you're going to save 200 bucks from an iPhone 10, um, about 50, you know, 150 or 50 from uh, Note 8, depending on, on what deal you're getting. Uh, but, yeah, so I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing some people with these and, you know, some more hands-on stuff. But... What do you guys think of, of the launch here? Do you think that $800 is going to be low enough to get people to switch over from the Note 8 or iPhone 10? The sweet spot, as they were saying. Well, um, it, re it really depends on you know how you use your phone because if you 
want to take notes with your phone, you're going to need a Note 8. Right. If you're going to want high quality audio, you're going to want a V30. Yeah. And if you want to spend a lot of money on a phone that looks cool, you're going to get an iPhone 10. So <laughs> that's basically where well, it's at. If you want iOS with an LED <laughs> screen. That's what you're gonna you're gonna right and and not huge bezels from five years ago. Right. Uh, you need an iPhone 10, and and you want you know all of the app manufacturers to have to make new apps just so they can handle that little you know the thing that I love the black at the top that uh, an Android app came out that gives you a black bar at the top. It, did you see that? Oh yeah, it's hilarious. It, it allows any app to be covered with a little black bar at the top as the bezel cutout from the iPhone 10. Uh, yep. So like, you can make you, any phone look like the iPhone 10. Which, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, so. Yeah. I don't think that's how it works, guys. But it was really funny that they were like, "It's a design thing." I did see a really cool. Oh, I should have brought up the GIF. Uh, there was a really cool designer that made it when it's sideways use this as a swipe in and there was a little ui design that was with where it made the same shape as the cutout so there's this really cool design where when you're pulling in from menus it can be on the left side in landscape and it would look really uh really well designed looked thought out but he's just a designer he had no code with it he was just like this would be pretty cool if someone designed this you know or if someone uh coded this but yeah, I think that $800, uh, maybe I'm thinking within the first month or so, they're going to be popping out big deals and pumping out something that's going to make this more reasonable. Um, so, you know, if you wait about a month, I bet they're going to have this down to like 750 700 and that's going to look really good compared to $1,000 or 900 So, uh, Which is never going to be discounted ever. Um, what? Oh, the, yeah, the iPhone the 10. The iPhone X 10 is never going to be discounted, but the Note 8 will, and so will we. So will the um, V30. So Definitely. wait, wait for the Pixel 2 to come out. You know, wait if you can wait till Black Friday. Wait till Christmas time. You know, that's going to be your best yeah, time uh, to get a better deal on the phones with maybe added accessories and bundles that you were already yeah. going to get that will make it cheaper Definitely. for you. So, um, yeah, the now is not the time to buy a new phone. You got to wait as, you know, there are the got to have it people, but those people are paying full price yep. and they don't care. So, <laughs> right. They have a little extra money to spend, but um, <laughs> throw me in not that, I. And I can't. <laughs> what was that? I said, throw me in that camp. I've been saving my pennies since the iPhone uh, well, 6. So. Yeah, but I'm saying you, it, you're not, the camp was that they're buying it as soon as a new phone comes out. You've yeah. paid your dues with your iPhone 6 for many moons yeah. now. I think, I think many moons. no one's going to be harping on you for getting a new phone. So, no. um, But yeah, so moving right along, uh, speaking of glass, you know, the new glass displays, what kind of 3D printing is happening, Jamie? Yeah, so I thought that was interesting. Um, they're, they already have, um, if you, let me make sure I got this right screen here. Um, uh, in 3D printing, they have uh, filament that you can print out that is basically is glass. And it is um, um, approved by the authorities, uh, whatever, FCC or whoever, that says that something can be um, used for food um, to be, so you could 3D print a bowl and technically sell it to put food in there um, or or you know you're not gonna get in trouble if you if you have food in there um, and so the uh, this one people in the National Laboratory of wherever this place is Livermore Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory came up with the first 3d printed glass and let me get this shared here. So some of the applications of this are, um, they're big on lasers. So they're creating little teeny um, glass pieces to shoot lasers through. And the interesting thing about this is normally they would have to wait a very long time to you know, send out to get a specially gradiated uh, glass structure that would allow the, the correct wavelength of, of laser and power of laser is there to go through a little teeny lens, but now they can actually 3D print them. So what they do is they take the material, 
they 3D print it on a surface, um, they dry it, and then they um, do a special thermal heating treatment that actually shrinks it down. It looks like it's almost like half size um, of what it originally was, but that makes it glass. So whereas like the normal 3D printing glass filament that's been out there it kind of looks like it's been 3d printed you know it has the layers it has some rough um, around the edges you know unless you kind of buff it down or something like that but this can make a perfectly clear transparent um, glass so yeah. theoretically you could print um, you know on the fly well you know on the fly um, uh, glasses in about an hour in prescription glasses you know you, yeah. you print it you'd have to let it dry and then you'd have to um, to do it that way or um, you know a, a camera lens for a cell phone could be um, done yeah. this way so people that are prototyping certain hardware for you know robotics or uh, cell phone designs or things like that wouldn't have to special order um, these things in bulk or, or whatever they could for the prototype process or for um, applications they could they could definitely do it this way. Um, so it makes it a lot cheaper to um, do things. And they say most applications are in chemistry, biology, optics, and photonics. Um, so it's pretty cool. Um, these guys deal with high power lasers, which I think is kind of neat anyway. Um, but as you can see, she's, at first I thought it was, when I saw the thumbnail, it looked like she wasn't holding anything at all. And I'm like, Okay, so oh. glass that you can't even see. It's like invisible <laughs> glass. <laughs> wow. Um, but you can, uh, it's, 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 um, most glass that's 3D printed, it was not transparent. It was, um, you know, mostly kind of, you know, not fully opaque, um, but cloudy, I guess you could say. It was, you couldn't really see through it as uh, frosty. Um, so this, this yeah. is definitely a breakthrough from, from things. And they say that there's actually some things that are almost impossible with conventional manufacturing methods. Um, hmm. to be able to make the gradients and things that you can do with 3D printing, um, the additive process that you can't do with other things. So I thought that was really cool. Um, I like it. I, I, it'd be cool to see what people can um, come up with and what, what fabrications they can do for research and development. Um, and we'll see what they, they come up from here. It's awesome. Yeah, I definitely think that there can be a lot more uh, scientific uh, purposes of that with, with experiments and with some of them uh, generally learning about optics that way. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how they can advance it. And just the whole idea of 3D printing and it being faster and more uh, efficient and potentially a, a lot of money saving in all of this is it's pretty cool for technology in general to move things forward. Um, so yep. I like, I'm going to 3D print me some pizza and uh, go numb that and then... They have that. They do. Yeah, I know. 3D printed chocolate, 3D printed pizza, 3D. There's all kinds of cake. What a time to be alive, my brothers. What a time to be alive. Funnel cakes, 3D printed um, pancakes. Uh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. It's a beautiful thing. Well, wonderful. Uh, what kind of stuff do you all have going on? Josh, what do you have coming up for us? Well, I still have uh, – I'm actually going to be working on my – Cherry MX 3.0 video and uh, gonna be. I tried out the Forza Motorsport 7 demo on my Surface Pro uh, the other day. I'm gonna be doing a review of that and because uh, that's coming out tomorrow. If you if you pre-ordered it, it comes out sooner than October 1st or 2nd or something like that. Um, so, uh, but you gotta throw down the money right now but uh yeah. from the de from the demo it's a pretty it's a pretty nice driving game and uh so i'm uh i of course pre-ordered the ultimate edition because it's ultimate, it's ultimate. <laughs> <laughs> you're kind of an ultimate kind of guy you know uh yeah yeah so uh hopefully um I'm gonna get into some battle royale stuff with the Fortnites and the PUBGs and all that jazz uh maybe do some streaming tonight or tomorrow so Yes, Man. it should be fun. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Jeremy, you got any uh, cool stuff happening here at your end? Uh, yeah, probably we'll have some, um, you know, if you are have a business and you want to um, have your tech running faster, better, more efficient, uh, we'll probably have some videos coming here in the next couple of weeks. So uh, check us out on the YouTubes, youtube.com slash Omnitech Pro.
<laughs> I love it. Well, cool. All the links uh, for the brother stuff is down below. You can feel free to check out all that stuff. Uh, I'm excited to keep up with the tech talking with you guys and see you guys next week for another riveting episode of the tech hey. talks. Yes. Hey, just, just look at our lower thirds. They're amazing. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can learn lots. Lot, lot. There's, all kinds, there's a plethora of information that is being produced. Yes. On the stream. But thanks. thanks guys so much for watching. We hope that you have an absolutely wonderful afternoon, and we will talk to you all in the next episode.